Welcome to the 2023-24 Vanguard Women's Basketball Season Preview. I'm here with head coach Russ Davis. And coach, I said preseason preview, but we've had some scheduling conflicts and things have just been so busy. So this is really more like an early season check-in since you actually have played five games to this point. Yep but still a lot of season to go. And I just wanted to get your thoughts so far. You guys are four and one so far. Came off a nice uh, Thanksgiving tournament up in Santa Clarita with two wins over two very competitive teams in nations going in before you even played a game. Have those been altered now that you've seen your team play for a handful of games? No, I don't think so. I think that, um you know, we've still got some people that are trying to be 100% healthy. And so we're trying to figure all those things in. We're mixing in some freshmen that are getting some minutes for us with returners and people that sat out last year because of injury. And then obviously we have the good nucleus starting back with, you know, return, two returning All-Americans. And then you add Arian, who's been the starter here for, you know, three years previous to this. So it's, uh, you know, we have a good complementary players you know, that, um, you know, we're still trying to, I mean, our lineup's probably going to change. It hasn't changed yet, but I, I foresee, like, depending on who we play in the matchups, because we have a lot of, we have a lot of guards on our team that are real close, and they all do different things, so. And you've coached a lot of games over your career, and the game on Saturday against Brian, uh, the team was down 19 points at, at one point and came back and won. Uh, was that one of the greatest comebacks that, that you've seen in the program's history? Or where does that rank up there? Well, I told the girls afterwards, I mean, we, we, we weren't doing anything, right? I mean, we were just like, they came out and I, if it was a boxing match, they came out and Mike Tyson us, you know. And then we just kind of take it and then we came out with the aggression in the second half. You know, it was a tail of two halves, but um, at the end of the day in basketball, if you make a bunch of shots, it's going to cover up a lot of stuff. So our girls really responded. Um, they never quit. And uh, they were determined. We showed a lot of grit. Um, they were really just uncommon, to be honest with you. And led by Howie, who, who uh, had a career, career high at that, that game, 33. And, and then a lot of people made big shots for us, you know, down the set, down the stretch. You know, Jaron made some big threes, and Sarah made some big threes. And, Ashley made a big three, and uh, you know Alexa stepped up, made made a couple big threes, and and Allie fouled out, so Alexa had to step up. Allie's been in foul trouble a lot, so she's uh, she's had a lot of opportunity to step up. So it's really been kind of a team thing, even though we have two people that are scoring a lot of points, but we have a lot that are capable of having some big nights like that. So. Alexa played uh, 34 minutes in that game, so she's been doing great. I know it's a, a balanced effort and everybody's contributing, but if you're going to start the conversation uh, about the roster, about the players, I have to go with the senior All-American center forward, Melissa Akulu. And she's been everything uh, that's been advertised to this point, has already had a 40-point game, uh, has scored 20 or more, I think, in four of the five games. What is it like for you to be able to have somebody kind of at the, the forefront like her, a first-team All-American? Well, I mean, yeah, I could, yeah, that's a, that's a good one. Uh, you know, she, she works extremely hard. I mean, she's always one of the hardest workers in the gym, if not the hardest worker. She's intense. She creates things. She, she just does a lot for us. I mean, she alters shots. She's going to be in the front of our press. Obviously, she gets amazing rebounds. She's got, she's double teamed half the time. Crazy athletic. She gets a break going. Um, she, I mean, before our last game, she was shooting, I think, 72%, mm -hmm. you know, which is crazy. And averaging like 28 points and 12 rebounds or something. Now she's, I don't know, I think she's like 24, 25 points and 11, 12 rebounds. So shooting 68%. Uh, that's, those numbers are crazy. I don't know. You know, teams are going to, you know, teams try to stop them, stop her, and then we have a lot of different weapons, so I think it's really hard to just key on Melissa because we have a lot of girls that can really put the ball in the basket. So, right. um, you know, we were able to, I think one of the things I wanted to do is I really wanted to play these teams 
Um, we have three more tough games coming up before Christmas, and they, so that means we're going to go against seven teams that are probably going to end up making the tournament this year, you know, national tournament. So, and all on the road. So you can't. I mean, before we go in our conference, where our conference is like really, really improved. I'm, I'm like really excited about how good these teams are in our conference because we're going to be tested every night, and that's if you're a competitor, you want that. So, sure. Um, right now we got we got a break with the finals and everything else, and some games canceled or whatever. So it's like we're going we have an opportunity to do a lot of cleanups, and we're just really scratching the surface. I don't think we have played our best, and um, we've had we've had really good quarters and stuff like that. But, um, and halves. Um, so we're trying to be, put together some good games. Like and we're going to need those out in Arizona and through our conference. So I'm excited for this. Um, um, we show toughness. I've had to challenge them because we, you know, we haven't showed toughness in some time. So when, every time I've challenged them, they've rose above that and they accept the challenge. And, and uh, I'm, I'm really liking our mental toughness and. Uh, how gritty we are and how physical we are, and like, we're determined to give our best shot. So that, that's always good signs. And you mentioned that you have a lot of different players that can put the ball in the basket. Hallie C, sophomore All-American point guard, is one of them. Uh, you mentioned that she's coming off a career-high 33-point effort, um, has battled some foul trouble in some games uh, early on this season. but. Just talk about her uh, progression and her evolution from being a freshman starter to now a sophomore and her leadership and what she brings to the team. Well, she's also one of our captains as a sophomore. And, uh, you know, she's one of the best point guards in the country for many reasons. And what part of that is her leadership out there. I mean, we spend a lot of time talking about what we want in games and game plans and stuff. And I basically let her call some of the stuff as well because, you know, I trust her out there, you know. And so I'm really happy with that. I, I'm not too happy with her vows. <laughs> um, but, you know, she's making aggressive vows, so she's learning that because obviously have somebody that talented sitting on the bench for lots of minutes is not, you know, the biggest thing. But then again, Alexa has come off the bench and stepped in tremendously. I mean, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm surprised and not really surprised. She's got a, such a high basketball IQ. Um, Alexis, I mean, Hallie really worked on her game this summer. Her mid-range is, is great. And then she's knocking down threes now, and then she can get to the basket right or left and finish. So that, that's just, she's a hard cover. Just a hard cover. And then she can really push the ball in transition. She gets downhill, she finds people. So. You know, I knew that though when we were recruiting her that she was going to be able to come in and do things she's doing. So when she stepped, she's even rising above that. I'm really, really, really proud of Howie. When she's also one of the top uh, assist uh, players in the nation last year, over six a game, and she also rebounds, she steals the ball, she does a little bit of everything for you guys. Yeah, yeah, she does. And she's a good leader and she's, uh, she's really competitive. And she's all the things that you really want with somebody. We just got to. You know, we just got to keep the whistle from blowing sometimes right. out there. Yeah. Now, I also have to bring up Ariana Medansky, um, a three-year starter, I believe, mm -hmm. uh, a very capable outside shooter, but also the fact that she's just been in the program now uh, for, for four years, I believe, and, and what does she offer in terms of her leadership and her ability to communicate with some of the younger players on the roster? What have you seen from her so far in that way? Well, you know, Ari knows, me and Ari are close, so she knows exactly what, what I want, what, what the program wants, and what our standards are. So she does a really good job of upholding those for everybody and reminding them, showing some accountability that way. You know, and she can knock down shots. She, has, she doesn't get as many shots as she used to her freshman and sophomore year. She's not playing as many minutes as we were in this deep back then. But she still does a lot of little things out there. She's aggressive defensively. She'll make big plays, you know. Um, but the, the tricky thing with Ari is, you know, she's in her senior year of nursing school as well. So she misses, like, you know, two and a half practices a week, you know, which is mm. more than half our practices. So it's like... You know, but she also knows what we're doing. We haven't added two. We've had lots of new stuff, but it's like she she's really smart. She'll walk, she'll go back and watch practice film. She'll ask questions. 
She'll talk to her team when she misses stuff, so she's on top of it. She's definitely committed. I mean, she's one of the most committed players. To do her schedule and to do what she's doing and, and being there for the team with everything else, working in hospitals and doing all the things she's doing to get through the nursing program is, is really incredible. I'm really proud of Ari as well. That must be just a, a crazy schedule that she has to, to go through. Yeah, I don't know how she does it. And she still has time <laughs> to like tease me and heckle me about things and give me a hard time. So right. she, she, she finds time for that as well. When you look at other players on the roster, and obviously in order to be a successful team, um, you know, last year was 22-7, and seven, reached the second round of the NAIA tournament. In order to do that again, you can't just get contributions from one, two, or three players. It's got to be several. So when we look at the rest of the roster, the other two players that have been in the starting lineup, uh, at least in the early going, have been Sarah Matosian um, and Jaron Madsen. Give me your thoughts on their performance so far and then also some of the other players that have come off the bench and, and have given minutes to the team. I'll start with Jaron. Uh, Jaron is a, another basketball player that has a very high IQ and she's really versatile. So we can play Jaron at the two, three, or four, um, which really helps her and helps us. But she can really get going from the three-point line. Um, you know, I think she's had a nice start. I mean. I think she would tell you as well that she could probably do some things better, but everybody on her team can say that, right? But um, she's made some key play for, play, plays for us. Like the other night, she had a couple of big threes in that fourth quarter, part of our, our comeback when we were, we were getting pounded there. And, uh, you know, so we have a lot of depth at position, so we don't have to kill her with a ton of minutes. And so she's really stepped up in, into that role. And, and uh, you know, I think she's can play better than she is playing, um, but she's not hurting us right now, you know? So I think she's gonna just get better and better and better as well. Um, Cause she's still learning some stuff too. I mean, she's only a sophomore, right? And so uh, really happy with her. Uh, Sarah Matosian, that girl was in the gym every day this summer and she's really, really improved. Her numbers may not show it yet, but I'm telling you, she's been our most consistent player from um, as far as workouts and in the gym and open gyms over the summer and, and everything else, um, she's uh, yeah, she really put the work in. In all my years, I've told her and tell everybody I've never seen hard work not pay off. So I'm expecting big things from her. Um, I actually wanted to shoot more because she can really shoot it. She had a great game against uh, Wayland Baptist. Yeah, she she was she was huge in that game. Yep, yeah, she did, and you know with. You know, we have so many different people going to do things, so I think some games that it's going to be somebody different every game. Right now it seems to be like Mel or Howie, but I think some of the other people are going to surprise some people. I mean, I know what they're capable of. I see them every day, and their team does. So it's like, that's why we're just scratching what we can do. And, you know, playing all those games on the road and away from home and practicing on a shorter court is not regulation. We do have challenges, but we've accepted all those challenges. You know, and, uh, you know, I'm always, you know, coaches are always going to say, like, hey, you're doing good, we can do this, you know. So it's like you don't want to overcompliment them early because then, like, okay, we're making coach happy, right? Um, but I'm really, really proud of how we started off. If you would have told me that we'd be 4-1, I probably would have signed. I mean, I want to go 5-0, and of course, but I would have signed up for 4-1, um, you know, going into that tournament out in Arizona. That's a big, big tournament for not just us, all the teams going. So, Lots of, lots of great teams going out there. I want to go back to some of the other players, especially some of the newcomers, but since you brought up the schedule, uh, as you pointed out, challenging schedule, lots of teams that are probably going to be in the NAIA bracket come February, March, and that tournament out there in Arizona is going to be one of the toughest tests that you'll face you know all season mm -hmm. uh, number three indiana wesleyan uh number 20 mid-american nazarene and then you've also got health sciences and pharmacy which if i'm not mistaken has one of the top scorers in the country if not the top scorer in the, the country the last three years she's averaged almost 35 points a game what uh i mean you have lots of time to prepare but that is going to be one of the, the toughest tests. What, what is that, uh, how does that shape up for you and just in terms of what that means for, for your season? 
Well, we've got a couple weeks to get ready for that. Um, this week, we're cleaning up a lot of the stuff that we know we can get better at, and the next week we're going to start focusing on those opponents. And uh, so, but I watched film on them already. I really think Indiana Wesleyan is a team that can win the whole thing. I mean, I'm really impressed with them. And the School of Pharmacy, their, their coach does an excellent job. We've, I've competed against his teams for many years when he was at, you know, another school out there in Missouri. And, and so uh, he's a really good coach. and, and uh, and that player is a real deal. I mean, you don't, when you go into games and you're averaging almost 35 points and everybody's trying to stop you and you still get it. <laughs> I mean, I was talking to Coach the other night and he said, like, she had a couple 40 point games, she didn't even get player of the week in their conference. You know, because. It's almost like it's expected now. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, you know, it's like, well, that's what she does. Well, it's not easy to do that when we you know everybody's trying to stop you, right? So, I mean, she's, she's something else. So that's going to be great for us to try to prepare for that and try to. Do that because she's not the only one on the team. Obviously, they got they, they have a good team. Um, so, you know, in the Mid America, um, we've last time we played them, they knocked us off. You know, in Indiana um, at the national tournament, the chance to go to the final site. So, uh, you know, I've been friends with that coach for 20 years. So we always have great battles. Um, so uh, yeah, it's, it's uh, you know those are three teams I think are going to go to the tournament as well and do well. So it's like, you know, we're just throwing ourselves in the fire and, and, and seeing how we come out. Hope we don't get burned that we were able to put the fire out. You know, um, but I expect close games, intense games, competitive games, and, you know, um, I'm actually looking forward to that. Then you're going to come out of that tournament, go into the Christmas break, head into the new year, and all of a sudden it's GSAC play. and. This being the last season of membership in the Golden State Athletic Conference, last year of membership in the NAIA. One thing is for sure, Westmont is not going to be on the schedule. They have already made the, the trek into the Division II realm. But as you also mentioned, the GSAC is no joke. It's very competitive and in order to get a, a league title, you're going to have to be playing at your best. And so who right now is, you know, looking to be some of the tougher, toughest competition that you're going to be facing? Or is it everybody? I can tell you this, like, if you just, let's just say you went by the coaches poll or the media poll that came out, Otto was picked eighth, and I think they're undefeated right now, eight or nine or no. Okay, and they were picked last. Okay, and then seventh was Life, and I think Life started off six and zero, oh. or I think they're seven and two now, maybe. Um, so they're picked seventh. Sixth place team, I think, was Arizona Christian, if I remember right. Um, I have to go back and look. Um, and Arizona Christian beat Carroll College already, who's ranked fifth in the nation. Okay, just a sample. And Hope, who I think was picked fourth. I can't remember exactly off the top of my head where they're picked, but I mean, Hope beat a Division One school already, and Hope beat us twice last year. Okay, so and they got great players back, and they're well coached and they're hard to cover because they can really score it. And then William Jessup basically has had their whole team back, added some key players, and one of their best players is having a great year right now, shooting like 70 percent from the field. So it's like you know, and they the kid one of their top players last year got injured his back playing and I think and they beat Sac State a division one team. And then you got Minlo who won the tournament last year and they returned a couple of players, like one of the best players in the country in their forward. You know, and then you got Masters who we just watched beat the team that was up on eighteen, they just beat him by twenty eight. <laughs> and they're they're like a complete different team. They've added some pieces and got hyped and she does a great job up there. So it's like you know, there's no, I mean, I hope I didn't miss anybody, but I think I got everybody, but it's like, it's... There's, there's no nights off. No, there's not, which is great, you know, so I think people are going to beat each other. So we're just going to have to try to survive that as well, you know, so all our games are going to be great um, and intense. And that's why, that's why I'm glad we have a good bench, you know, we, we, uh, we I, I like our bench. We bring Hunter off the bench in the post so far. Hunter sat out last year due to injury, and she's a physical presence out there. She's still trying to get herself like in game mode, and so by the time we have conference, I think she's really going to be making a big difference for us and give us good depth. And then 
you know, there's some girls that are pushing the starting lineup, like Ash. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if she's not in that starting lineup pretty soon because, I mean, she does a lot of good things out there. You know, she's a freshman from Texas. You know, um, she can really stroke it. And then she's long, she gets tips and deflections, she gets rebounds, and she's hit Mel on a couple of nice passes over the top. She takes care of the ball. She picks things up quick. She's playing her different positions. We have Natalie coming. We have Natalie also uh, from Arizona, who is is one of the few guards we have that can really keep people in front and get to the basket and knock down shots at mid range and deep. She she was out for a while with a with an injury, so she's feeling her way back. But she's going to make a big impact for us as well. Um, and then we have Faith. Faith returns from last year, and Faith is I think is one of the best shooters around. I mean, she can really knock it down. Mm -hmm. you know, and she's, she's been battling a couple of injuries here and there and some sickness, but I expect her to get out of that pretty quick and, and show what she's capable of doing. I think she's shooting 50% from three right now in the short amount of time that she's played. Um, and uh, she's, worked, she's worked extremely, extremely hard. So I think she's going to do a great job with that and, um, and really looking forward to what she's going to show. Um, yeah, I mean, those are just some that off the top of my head. Um, probably missing somebody, but... I'll probably hear about that, but those are some of the ones that, you know, and then, oh, I already talked about her, Alexa. She's been, like, steady Eddie out there. She's been, like, yeah, she's been great. When you talk about Alexa Silva and Sarah Matosian, Faith Boss, and Ashlyn Crabtree, and they can all shoot the ball. You can, you can spray the ball anywhere on the court and, and beat somebody from distance. Yeah, all those girls, you know, if you're going to shoot threes for us, you have to pass the shooting test, which is not easy. Because I don't want people shooting threes. I don't want shooters, I want makers, right? So, um, you know, those guys can all make baskets. So, um, so uh, they have a green light, and that smells open underneath the basket. Right. <laughs> Get her the ball, right? Unless we have a rematch. So, but I don't want our shooters hesitating. But, you know, we're shooting a lot of threes, but a little bit more than we should right now. Sometimes we forget about Melissa, even though she get a lot of points, but we'll probably get her some more shots. Um, but, yeah, I think I'm, of all those people, I'm, I'm all the guards, I think, right now, Hallie and Lex, I'm really most impressed with how they've stepped up. Well, we definitely look forward to, to seeing them in action as, as the season goes along. I have to ask you, being that this is the last year in NAIA, it's got to be kind of bittersweet. There's a lot of memories that you've accumulated over the years. Yeah. Favorite um, memories of just competing. Obviously, the national championship that 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 you won, but there's got to be so many others. What are what are some of the favorite ones that come to mind? I think my very first year when we I think I don't know if we were like 18, 11, or something like that, where you know. I remember when Bob hired me, he told me it's going to take me five years to get the team going and have a winning season. And I remember looking at him like, hey, I've never not had a winning season. So it's like, I, that wouldn't be good for anybody, right? And so I think that team, the cement of our program, that first team I had, those that's my special fond memory, how they bought into change in the culture and really turned our program around. And we things we did with them, we still do today. Um, so I, it's really hard for me to talk about them. I get emotional. I just love that team so much and those people. And a lot of them came to the, the barbecue they had for me to honor me for the new uh, event center stuff. So um, that was um, that was one, one that sticks out. And also, like, our first Final Four. Um, back then, you had to win a conference tournament to go to a national tournament, kind of like this year. Um, that's your highly ranked. We weren't ranked, but we were 12. We went 12 and 0 in conference, GSEC champs, and we still had to win the tournament to go. We hosted it, and it was it was the loudest I've ever seen this gym in my 28 years here. And to get out there and cut the nets down in front of people chanting. Back then we were SCC. That's how long ago it was. Everybody's chanting yeah, SCC, SCC. And our, our president at the time got up on the ladder and cut down the nets, and uh, it was a I mean, I've got goosebumps right now just remembering that, knowing that, and then going up to the classroom afterwards, having all the parents up there and telling them we're going to nationals and start working on plans. That was our first trip. But now, obviously, we've been like 25, 26 times, whatever it is, but it was really, really special. Um, and uh, 
like I said, our first Final Four, the champions and character winners that we've had, those are huge memories of mine that, um, you know, national award winners that way. Six national players a year, those are special moments because those are all player and team stuff. And then, um, you know, ultimately winning that national championship was really, really special. Um, when the, coming back the other night, when, we, when nothing was going right for us, that was, that was a big moment. But most importantly, sharing these moments with all these people. We recruit character and really outstanding people with families for a reason. We love being around them. And I'm hard, I'm hard on them, I push them because I want them to see, do things that they know, think they couldn't do. And when they leave here, I don't want them to have anything left. I want them to make sure they get, we got everything out of them and they're happy because to me, those are life skills they're going to be able to take with them for the rest of their life. Yeah. Because they're going to go for basketball a short time, right? Yeah. They're going to be people in, in society. And, and right now where this world stands and this country stands, we need, we need those outstanding people like in our program to go out there and make a difference in the world. And those relationships endure forever. Well, we are family. And I, I love everybody. It's ever, I really, truly do. It's ever stuff to put on there and, you know, and, uh, and wear that uniform proud. Well, Coach, thank you for your time. Um, you know, we look forward, obviously, to closing out the NAIA um, last year of being in the NAIA on a on a happy note, hopefully, um, and then looking forward to christening the new Freed Center for the 24-25 season. So, lots of great things ahead for for Vanguard women's basketball, and we're just so thankful that we have you here as coach. Yeah, I'm blessed to be here. I thank the Lord every day. Thanks, Mike. All right, thank you. Yep.